Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice equation. We have z squared plus 1 over z squared equals 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. I'll be presenting more than one method, let's see how many methods we can come up with. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to use an identity. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as a plus b squared minus 2ab, which is a squared plus b squared. But before we start solving this with the first method, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions, z squared plus 1 over z squared and 1. If you actually graph them in all from alpha, you're going to notice that they don't have any intersection points, which means there are no real solutions. Okay, and that kind of makes sense, right? Because this channel is all about complex numbers. Now let's see how we can apply this identity here. So in this case, A is gonna be Z and B is gonna be one over Z, makes sense? So this means Z squared plus one over Z squared can be written as Z plus one over Z quantity squared minus two AB, which is two times Z times one over Z. But that just turns into two because Z and one over Z are reciprocals and we are given that this is equal to what this sum is equal to one awesome so from here we get the following z plus one over z squared minus two equals one which means z plus one over z squared equals one plus two which is three so you might be thinking like oh maybe there are real solutions don't you think because z plus one over z can't we find a number that satisfy this well let's go ahead and find out from here, we get two solutions, basically. One of them is going to be z plus 1 over z equals square root of 3. And then the other one is going to be the opposite, which is z plus 1 over z equals negative square root of 3. Make sense? Great. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and multiply everything by z. By the way, one thing to keep in mind, maybe I'll tell you a little later, z squared plus 1 equals square root of 3z. And let's put everything on the same side. And now we have a really nice quadratic equation. And how do you solve it? Using the formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 3, minus 4ac. Uh-oh, this is where the complex numbers come in, right? Because 3 minus 4 is negative 1. The square root of negative 1 can be written as plus minus i, but better is always a plus minus. So we can basically write this as square root of 3 plus minus i divided by 2. Now, here's what I would like to tell you, but let me do this first. z squared plus 1 equals negative root 3z, and then z squared plus root 3z plus 1 equals 0. And then from here, similarly, we're going to get negative root 3 plus minus square root of 3 minus 4 divided by 2, and that's going to turn into negative root 3 plus minus i divided by 2. Make sense? So all the solutions are non-real. Now, why is that happening? Because... If z is positive, if z is positive, then this sum is supposed to be greater than or equal to 2. When they're equal, 1 and 1, sum is 2, otherwise it's just going to be greater than or equal to 2. And we can easily prove this by using AMGM or some other identity. If z is negative, then z plus 1 over z is supposed to be less than or equal to negative 2. Similarly, and in both cases, square root of 3 actually is going to be outside those boundaries, which means you're not going to get any real solutions. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other methods. All right, the second method, we're going to start with this again, z squared plus 1 over z squared equals 1. Now for our second method, we can go ahead and actually just make a common denominator. Multiply everything by z squared, and then you get something like this. And now put everything on the same side and then do the substitution. Z squared equals W. And this gives us W squared minus W plus 1 equals 0. Now the roots of this quadratic should be familiar to you. If not, I would highly recommend that you multiply both sides by W plus 1. And when you do, you're going to see something amazing because on the left hand side, we're going to get W cubed plus 1 and on the right hand side, 0. This means that we are actually looking for a number whose cube is negative 1. But isn't that number negative 1? Well, here's the thing. 
W obviously does not equal negative 1 because, well, actually, maybe it is, right? Could it be? Well, here's the thing. If W is negative 1 and then we're going to find two other cube roots of negative 1, there's going to be a total of three roots. But we're supposed to find only two roots for W because this is quadratic. Make sense? So W is not going to equal negative 1. And obviously, we did multiply both sides by W plus 1, but it was already 0. So anyway, something to think about, right? So from here, we can find the solutions. But if you really want to, you know, go with the quadratic, you can. Or just think about the cube roots of negative 1. If you write negative 1 as e to the power 2, actually not 2, I should probably use pi i, right? And then from here, uh, and we can definitely multiply by, um, we can add a 2 pi n, right? And then we should probably multiply this by, the whole thing by i, like this, yep. You can also write 2n plus 1 times pi, which is an odd multiple. And from here, you can divide both sides by 3. And w is just going to be e to the power i times pi over 3 plus 2 pi n over 3. So if n is equal to 0, you're going to get w equals e to the power i pi over 3. If n is equal to 1, you're going to get pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 which is going to give you pi, but that's going to be negative 1. You don't want that. If n is equal to 2, then w is going to be pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3, and then e to the power i times 5 pi over 3 is going to be the other solution. Now, if you think about it, this is going to be at 300 degrees, so it's going to be in the fourth quadrant, and this is going to be in the first quadrant. So basically, from there, we're going to get but here's the thing you need to consider. W is z squared, right? So to find z, you have to set this equal to z squared. And from here, you have to find the z values, which are going to be the square roots of this number. And they're going to be e to the power i times pi over 6. And e to the power i times pi over 6, you're going to add up pi to it, which is going to give you 7 pi over 6. And from here, you're going to get e to the power i times 5 pi over 6. And if you add pi to it, it's going to be e to the power i times 11 pi over 6. And guess what that's going to give you? It's going to give you the exact same solutions as before. Now, could we find possibly a third method to solve this problem? Let's go ahead and take a look. We probably could, right? I mean, uh, what, what can we do? We could probably just, again, make a common denominator. z to the fourth plus 1 equals 2z squared. z to the fourth plus 1 equals... Yeah, that's right. Well, by the way, it's, that wasn't a 2. That was a 1. What, why did I change it so quickly, right? Okay, so it's supposed to be z squared. And then we can kind of put these on the same side. But again, without making a substitution, I guess, it will be really hard. Oh, yes. Here's what we can do. We can actually multiply both sides by z squared plus 1 this time, right? That would be kind of interesting. And this would give you z to the 6th plus 1 equals 0. From here, you're going to find z to the 6 equals negative 1. And we're basically looking at the 6 roots of negative 1, again, which it can be written as e to the power 2m plus 1 pi i. But here's the thing. Since you multiply both sides by these, from the 6 roots of negative 1, you kind of have to take out the square roots of negative 1. So there's going to be four solutions at the end. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.